the water's unique in it. Sadly, I mean, that's what we had to come up with, was sadly, it's so bad that everyone will need to look at their water. And, you know, there's an interesting product that I'm not going to name products on your radio show that is very exciting for us. and uh, For cleaning the water? Yeah, in a very unconventional way. Like I mentioned earlier in the show here, yes. when water is very refined, it cannot hold the contaminants. There's a product that is doing some very interesting things to help those contaminants drop out of water so that a simple filter can take them out. You know, simple carbon filters will take out a lot of things from water, but they don't take out fluoride. Big problem, unfortunately. And we've got an article on the website. That's where I'll direct people, Kim. We've got an article we just barely put up on the website. We have a tab of articles, and one is how to remove fluoride from water. Well, if you can remove fluoride from water, you can also take out some other things from water. It's a simple article, and it doesn't go into the depth, but there are some things that apartment dwellers and people that can't afford $1,000 pieces of equipment to clean their water can do to really get a good canvas, we call it, to begin with, a good canvas on which to then imprint the full spectrum of water's frequencies. I wanted to talk about the egg-shaped containers of water. Once we have our water cleaned, however we're able to do it, and we are able to get it structured, there's an egg-shaped container or pitcher, right, that we pour the water into. Can you talk about that, why that's relevant? Another article on our website will address this with some graphics, which we didn't really go into in the book. But it's one of the things that Victor Schauberger discovered as well. The shape of the egg is nature's gestation shape. You know, it's the shape of the womb. It's the shape of many seeds. It's the shape that holds energy. It holds energy and it draws in cosmic energy. It's based on the Fibonacci series, which we also discuss in the book, or the golden mean spiral, close to the same thing. This series, most people know, repeats itself in nature everywhere. And there's a reason for that, and its pattern then is implicit in the shape of the egg. The Fibonacci series, the golden mean spiral, is in the shape of the egg there. So the shape of the egg is nature's way to hold and gather energy. And it's perfect for the shape of a womb, you know, and a developing child. And and it's perfect in a seed. And I was talking to somebody not very long ago. They had visited India, and they still make these egg-shaped containers. Both in Africa and India, right? Yep. Yeah. They're horrendous to try to store anywhere because they move and they tip over. But they still keep making these containers to keep their water in because there's a reason for it. And they use clay because clay breathes. So it's wonderful for for water. It allows water to breathe. It keeps water energetically moving all the time so there's no stagnation. It's gathering in this gestating energy from the cosmos, from the universe, This woman was saying these egg-shaped containers, they break, but they just keep making them. Well, why? Because they're so perfect. When you go into the pyramids, you'll find these amphora, they're called. They're shaped like an egg because they preserve the energy in seeds. They store their seeds that way. They're viable after thousands of years. Well, you know, hello. There's a reason for that. This is the shape of the egg, and what it does for water is very lovely. Do you have several in your kitchen? I do. (laughs) Do you have some in your refrigerator? Actually, I've got my rice and grains in them. Just a way to keep everything very energized. Wow. Can we talk a little bit about prills? I thought that was kind of interesting. That's an interesting subject. It's not something that a lot of people would necessarily be open to. Prills. We've got to encourage people to read this whole section on laminar crystal because prills are simply magnesium oxide. But the prills that are being sold for water treatment in the context of structuring water here are, number one, kiln dried, so they don't fall apart so easily. They'll hold together. And number two, like you said, we have got a mix in the book of science, and wisdom that's been handed down from the ages and and things that work energetically. Like, 
you and I know people have put crystals in water forever. Well, we explain why that works. And, it, you know, it's in terms of the piezoelectricity that happens in a crystal. It's also because of epitaxy, something I won't go into here, but the structural information in a quartz crystal being communicated to water. That's scientific now. So back to the whole prills thing. Prills are magnesium oxide. They're not really balls. They're kind of globular shapes, no more than maybe a millimeter or two. But when you put these in water, after energetically being enhanced, vibrationally enhanced, they help loosen water's molecular structure. Remember, that's the first step to structuring water. And they also um, have been used in the water industry to help drop out some contaminants. So there's a little bit of neutralization of contaminants going on. Magnesium, big, big mineral. Everybody talks about calcium, but it's like the oxygen-hydrogen thing. We think we want more oxygen, but we really want the hydrogen in the water. And people are talking about magnesium and calcium, and they're thinking they need all this calcium, but it's really the magnesium the body wants. So they're magnesium oxide. They're releasing the frequency of magnesium into the water, which is wonderful. They're energizing the water. They're helping some pollutants drop out. They're loosening the molecular structure of water so that it can be structured. So it's part of everything I do for water is using those prills. It wouldn't be necessarily something everybody would pick up on through the book, but it's part of our process. I thought it was really, really neat and unusual and that we should talk about it. Okay, it is. You know, it's kind of one of those things that people may find on the edge, but they work. I also want you to talk a little bit about the time that you spend with Dr. Mushik Jean. Okay, Dr. Mushik Jean actually studied in this country under a very famous scientist by the name of Henry Eyring and did his Ph.D at the University of Utah in the 1960s. Those two scientists ended up writing a book called Significant Liquid Structures, something like that. That might not be the complete name of the book. But they really began in the 1960s this work that Mushik John spent 40 years of his life following to document that water had a liquid crystalline structure. I mean, it's only in the last few years that our own scientists have really kind of accepted this and acknowledged it. But Dr. Mushik John worked on his Ph.D. with Dr. Henry Eyring. They developed a number of theories, among them the theory you mentioned about the water environment within the human body. And he supposed in the 1980s he came up with this theory that aging and that health were all about the structure of the water within a human body. In fact, he gave a lecture at a cancer symposium where he met Dr. Albert Sangiorgii, who came up to him afterwards and said, you're on to something. Now, now, Albert Sangiorgii and Dr. Mushik John were both mentors, if you will, of ours as we created this book. Uh, we call our mentors Victor Schauberger, although he was before our time, and Albert Sangiorgii also before our time, but Albert St. Georgi I told Dr. Mushik John, and we put that in Dr. Mushik John's work that Dr. St. Georgi I had said, if you can prove that aging and health are related to the structure of the water in the human body, then you're on to something. And we have begun to show that to a certain degree. Dr. Mushik John's work began to show that before he passed away in 2004. He did some initial work that basically showed that increasing the amount of structured water in the body had an impact on diabetes, on cancer, on digestion. He did some initial work there, just started to touch the surface of it. And so his work was very impactful for me because he, he was a scientist through and through, very academically published, 280-some academic publications in his career. He was a very well-respected scientist, and he was all over this idea that maintaining the structure of the water in your body was paramount to your health. So, you know, he was key in my background and my history with water. I know we're going to do this in two parts, but I would like to talk about the fact that after Dr. Emoto's books came out, he was kind of one of the people that was a prime mover in explaining how water responds to voice, to music, to what's said, to the environment, what people are thinking and feeling, and what it means to imprint your water. 
And one of the things you said in your book was structure your water first, then imprint it. And the first thing I want to do is have you explain what does it 